Hi, I'm Lance Culver, and this is going to be a beginner's level tie flow for 3D Studio Max tutorial. I'll be rebuilding the tie flow sample file UVW projection. If you're fairly new to tie flow, there may be some aspects of this that you're not 100% familiar with, but that's okay. It's a very easy setup. We can get right into it. Go to create, standard primitives, plane. Bring up your material editor. I have a texture set up here. You can use anything you like. Apply a UVW map modifier. Select the modifier there. And scale that down to about that size. Okay, go to helpers. You may need to click on this drop down. Tie icon. drag it in somewhere like that we can adjust this later when we have some particles go to geometry select tie flow before we start if you have a CUDA capable GPU enabling this option will likely improve the performance of the simulation you can also increase the sub steps here to 10 Okay, open editor. Okay, drag out birth operator. And then on 90 frames, start out with a low number, let's say a thousand particles. You can change the display type to geometry. Insert position icon. Pick the tie icon. Use the shape operator. Select 3D, chunks round, and enable scale. Change to about 140% with the 25% variation. Do a speed operator. Change the direction to a long icon arrow. Pick the icon. Drag out physics shape. Go into under speed. Change the speed magnitude to 11 centimeters with a 50% variation. And adjust the tie icon as needed until the particles cover the area around what we're trying to project here. Okay, so that's basically step one. Okay, we can turn off tie flow one, create a new flow, drag in a birth flow. Under source flow, select tie flow one. We will uncheck mapping under channels. Change this to 90 frames. Drop in a flow update. Again, select tie flow one. We want to uncheck mapping and shape. So by doing so, the channel input information from tie flow one will not override the mapping information we're trying to use to project onto these particles. Pick the plane. Change the mode to affect particle mesh vertices. All right, drag out a mesh operator so this can be rendered out. For this effect to work, we need to come down to enable simulation retimer. Select auto key. Okay, move down the timeline to about 175 frames or so. You could go all the way to the end, but somewhere where you know the simulation is over. Set a keyframe by typing 175. Select that keyframe and drag it over to zero. Now type zero. And you'll notice it set another keyframe. So now Frame 175 is at zero, and zero is at 175. Let's reset the simulation. Turn auto key off for a second. So we're starting in the final resting position of each of these particles. If we select Typo 2, Enable retimer. 
turn on auto key. And do the same thing in 75. Set a keyframe, select that keyframe, drag it over to frame zero. Turn off auto key. scrub through simulation refresh type load to selected and load the material editor apply the material turn off the plane let's see here and we can see the uh, effect is working so if I go back and I increase this particle count to let's say 5500 so again, what, by reversing tie flow two, it then appears to play in the correct sequence. You can kind of pay attention here to the, you see the jitter and the movement. It's because these are physics shapes and our simulation settings are fairly low and we can increase those and that would help that. And in a lot of instances you would need to do that. But in this particular instance, one thing we can do, if you happen to have watched any previous tutorials, I sometimes do this depending, but what you can do is you can drag out a property test into a new event here and you can change the test type to velocity magnitude and lower this number to something like 0 0.018 and then you can use a physics switch in a new event. You can change it to kinematic with a stop operator connect that to the property test and then drag out a send out operator go ahead and put that physics shape over here connect it to the send out and now So that's just a, a way of saving a little bit of time. A certain level of accuracy isn't needed. Well, that's pretty much it. As always, I appreciate you watching the video. If there was any part of this that you didn't understand or your results aren't similar to this, feel free to drop a comment below. Hope you have a great day. Take care. See you next time.